Earl Scruggs. Before him, no one had ever played the banjo like he did. After him, everyone played the banjo like he did. Or at least, they tried. In 1945, when he first stood on that spot, center stage, 25 feet from where I'm standing now, and he played the banjo the way no one had ever heard it before, the audience responded with shouts, whoops, and ovations. There aren't many earthquakes in Tennessee, but that night there was. He played with clarity and speed like no one before him. And on these nights, he had the stars of North Carolina shooting from his fingertips. When Bill Monroe came to the end of a sung phrase, Earl filled this theater with sparkling runs of notes that became a signature for all bluegrass music sense. He wore a suit and a Stetson hat, and when he played, he smiled at the audience like what he was doing was effortless. He first saw his future wife, Louise, when he was standing there, and she was sitting right there. He is the greatest and most influential banjo player who ever lived. All the banjo players I know, including myself, were motivated, influenced, or were given their starts when they first heard Earl Scruggs. The list of banjo players who owe a debt to him is endless. Even today, young people are led to the banjo from hearing Earl pick the five string. Here's 10-year-old Johnny Mizone and Sleepy Man Banjo Boys. Whoa.